morning to everyone who's here, uh, those who are here on the parking lot uh, at Gates Chapel Amy Church here in the Crawford. proceed as follows. Our uh, opening song by Sister Wanda Harris, our opening prayer by uh, Brother Andrea Fletcher, our scripture by Brother Kalen Williams, and then our sermonic song by Brother J. DeMond Bivens, and then after the sermon, and announcements, and at the, after the announcements, the closing prayer by Evangelist Rebecca Cornelius. So the order of our worship, the order of our service today. So thank you so very much now. All of you are on mute, and so those participants, uh, you will need to hit star six to unmute yourself. Praise God for whom all blessings flow. Really, my soul. 
for letting me um, come this morning and and pray.
Lord, watch over the one who takes the mistake in his hand. Amen. Lord, watch over the ones who wasn't able to get up this morning. Lord, watch over the ones and bless the ones who's locked up in NGL. Lord, I just ask you to just give me strength and give my family strength, Lord, and just allow us to keep moving and making it. That's all this in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Amen. Thank you, brother. Brother Caitlin. Brother Caitlin. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I read uh, Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. May the Lord have a blessing to read your spirit and do it through his word. Amen. 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 Brother Bivens. Brother Bivens. Brother Bivens. Yes, sir. Dear Lord, I pray, please help me on my way. Uh, give me courage and strength each day. Tell him, tell him and pray. Oh, 
he is willing, he is willing to share. And by God's grace, oh, I know I'll make it. Yes, I'll make it somehow. Oh, I'll make it somehow. Oh, I'll make it somehow. in the name of Jesus that we join our hearts and spirits together through teleconferencing and through Facebook and through the vision of the parking lot to come before your throne again to say thank you. We thank you God for all of your grace and mercy for morning by morning new mercies we see and we thank you now we pray god that you will speak a word to us this morning that somehow some way through the hearing of your word will be stronger and will be better somehow some way through the hearing of your word we'll be made aware of your great power and we'll do better we'll be better Send the word, open our hearts, open our minds and our spirits to receive your word today. Strengthen us. Thank you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And the church says, amen. First King uh, and the 17th chapter and the eighth through the 14th verse. First King, 17th chapter, the 8th through the 14th verses, reading those verses from the New Living Translation of the Bible. Here's what it says. Then the Lord said to Elijah, go and live in the village of Zareth, near the city of Sidon. I have instructed a widow there to feed you. So he went to Zareth, as he arrived at the gates of the village, he saw a widow gathering sticks and he asked her, would you please bring me a little water and a cup? As she was going to get it, he called to her, bring me a bite of bread too. But she said, I swear by the Lord your God, 
that I don't have a single piece of bread in the house. And I have only a handful of flour left in the jar and a little cooking oil in the bottom of the jug. I was just gathering a few sticks to cook this last meal. And then my son and I will die. But Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go ahead and do just what you said. But make a little bread for me first. Then use what's left to prepare a meal for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. There will always be flour and olive oil left in your containers until the time when the Lord sends rain and the crops grow again. I'd like to spend just a few minutes uh, speaking to you this morning from the thought, keep putting God first. From the thought, keep putting God first. My brothers and sisters, uh, sometimes um, if we are honest with ourselves, um, that is really difficult to do when we are pressed and our humanity kicks in, fear overtakes us. When we are pressed with hard times and sometimes even caught off guard by circumstances and situations, it is difficult for us not to put ourselves first. But I stopped by to remind you today that if you keep putting God first, everything will work out and it will work out for our good. In this text on this morning, uh, the prophet Elijah is caught in a famine. Uh, he, he is caught in a terrible condition. Brothers and sisters, um, we could then think of his position uh, in this text today as compared to the pandemic uh, that we are experiencing in 2020. Elijah is caught in, in a difficult time and God's plan for his rescue is for him to visit a widow and her son. Now, somebody ought to know this morning that, that God works in mysterious ways his wonders to perform. This God prepares a widow woman to take care of his prophet. God sends Elijah into what should be or what he no doubt considers and what probably is enemy territory for him. God sends him to a place near his arch nemesis, his arch enemy Jezebel's hometown. And then God, God tells him, not only do I want you to go to Jezebel's territory, to her home, to her former community, but then God tells Elijah that a widow would provide for him. Now, my brothers and sisters, uh, the reality of uh, that message is that uh, widows were probably the most unlikely source of support because my brothers and sisters during that day uh, widows were usually the most needy persons in the land I mean they were the ones who were depending on support 
from someone else. And apparently this particular widow uh, had no help from her family. This particular widow uh, apparently has no family members who care enough or who are able to help her. This particular widow woman finds herself in a position where she does not have a friend who is able or who cares enough to help her or her son. This particular widow woman is in the worst of conditions for her own self. And God says to his prophet, God says to Elijah, I'm going to take care of you. Go see this widow woman. The Bible, the Bible tells us, my brothers and sisters, that God sent him to enemy territory to a widow woman. But somebody ought to know this morning that when God sends us, uh, we are no longer relying on human power. I mean, when God sends us to do, when God gives us an assignment, when, when God gives us a, a duty, when God gives us something, when God sends us, we are no longer to rely on human power, but we are to rely on God's unlimited power. My brothers and sisters, when we trust and obey God, we have the assurances of his promises. My brothers and sisters, until this pandemic hit, uh, and, and until this pandemic caused us to be quarantined and, and, and locked in, until now, many folks took for granted that there would always be plenty to eat. Many folk took for granted that there would always be enough. Some even considered that there would always be more than enough. Yet now, my brothers and sisters, now folks find themselves looking at empty shelves in the largest of supermarkets. Folks find themselves not being able to find adequate cleaning supplies. Folks find themselves going to the market and not being able to find what they're looking for in 2020. Farmers can't get their crops to the market and people can't get to the market to get them anyway. Yet, my brothers and sisters, in spite of the circumstances, God wants us to be assured that today he is still our provider. I might need to say that again. We, we need to be assured today, my brothers and sisters, that God is still our provider and he will not let us perish in this pandemic. I know that we hear a lot of stuff. We hear a lot of uh, newscasts. We hear a lot of um, information and, and sources uh, that put the information out, uh, say they are, they are qualified, uh, that their opinions are or their information is the truth and and so forth and so on. And, and, and many times it seems that um, one expert of uh, information uh, conflicts with another expert's information. And so we have uh, individuals and people trying to decide who should I believe should I believe expert on my left or expert on my right? And we find ourselves in such a dilemma. And usually what it boils down to is that we make our choice or our decision based on how we feel or what
what we want to happen. And that may not be the right course. Well, um, but I just, I just want to leave you with a couple of quick points this morning and then we are finished. The first thing that I want to point out in this text today is that God uses the foolish to confound the wise and God uses the weak to confound the strong. This is marvelous in God's eyes because my brothers and sisters, uh, the pandemic may overwhelm the world and it may overwhelm our hospitals. It may overwhelm our medical and technological uh, help and support, but it does not overwhelm God. My brothers and sisters, God takes that that is foolish and he uses that to confound the most wise and that that is weak, he uses to confound, confound the most strong. God took care of his obedient servant and, and the weak and lowly, he took care of them both at the same time. Y'all see it in the text, don't you? The Bible says that, that, that Elijah, who is God's prophet, who is God's faithful prophet, Elijah, who is the man of God, goes to one who is a Gentile or an outsider, and one who is the poorest of poor in their own community. And the Bible says that at the same time, God took care of both of them. Both Elijah and the widow simply had to obey God. That's the message for us this morning. We got to keep on putting God first because when we simply obey God, then God takes care of our needs. My brothers and sisters, uh, I just want to remind you this morning, this pandemic caught us by surprise, but the pandemic did not catch God by surprise. I just want to remind you this morning that, that this pandemic caught uh, us unprepared to battle it or unprepared to fight against it, but it did not catch God by surprise and God knows the answer and God has the resolve. We must keep putting God first and trusting in him for our way through this thing. We had my brothers and sisters, Elijah and the widow woman simply had to put God first. Elijah had to put God first and trust him and follow his will and go to enemy territory and believe that God could take something weak and give him all that he needed for survival. We had to put, we have to put God first, my brothers and sisters. And this widow had to put God first because she had to trust God's prophet. She had to trust the man of God. Putting God first will always, my brothers and sisters, lead us to safety. Putting God first will always lead us to God's provisions. Putting God first. When we put God first, he will rescue us. And he will rescue us even in the midst of a pandemic. Well, then the last thing that I want to uh, tell you in this text this morning is that this text tells us that God promises to send us what we need. We read this text, we see that Elijah makes a bold statement to this widow woman. He says, fix me a, some bread first and then use what's left to prepare a meal for you and your son. And God promises, hallelujah, that you'll always have enough. 
God promises that you will be able to eat, not just for today, but you will have enough until crops began to grow again. You'll have enough until he sends the necessary rain. You'll have enough, God promises. My brothers and sisters, that's good news for us today. Uh, we remind you of David, man after God's own heart. You know, David wrote that the Lord is my shepherd. We gotta remember that today because God is our everything. I mean, God is water when we're thirsty and God is food when we're hungry. God is our everything. God is healing when you're sick. I mean, God is our everything. He is our way in and God is our way out. He's our light in darkness. I mean, God is our everything. He's the conqueror of our soul. He's our defense against oppression. God is our sword and he's our shield. I mean, God is our battle axe. God is our shelter in the time of storm. God is our everything. He simply asks us to keep on putting him first. And my brothers and sisters, when we keep putting God first, he'll keep working it out. He'll keep providing for us. He'll keep making a way. He'll keep opening doors. He'll keep changing circumstances and situations. God will fix it when you put him first. Trust him and obey him. That's what he's calling us to do. So my brothers and sisters, Elijah and the widow woman's story simply reminds us today that we must keep putting God first. He'll work it out till this pandemic is over and even beyond. Amen. Perhaps there's someone who is here on the parking lot watching us on Facebook or listening to us on this teleconference number today who has not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. The Bible says that Jesus is the way. He is the truth and the life and that no man, no woman, no one can come to the Father except through Jesus. And so this morning, uh, we must yield our lives. We must open our hearts. We must receive Jesus as our Savior in order to see the Father. And so my brothers and sisters, if you have not accepted Jesus as your Savior, today is your day. This is your opportunity, and right now is your time. If you will simply say yes to Jesus, he will come in. The Bible tells us that if any man be in Christ, he becomes a new creature, a new creature. He, all things, or the old things rather, have passed away, and all things become new. So my brothers and sisters, whatever you're struggling with, turn it over to Jesus. Whatever you're dealing with, and you've been working and trying to master it and fix it for yourself, try Jesus. Yield to him this day and watch Jesus work it out. And so if you're on a call or you watching us on Facebook and you've accepted Jesus as your savior, would you just give us a call or send us a message to let us know that you accepted Jesus as your savior We'll pray for you and pray with you in the days and weeks and months ahead. We thank you so much, and God bless each of you. Now, I have a few announcements, so I need you to listen closely. Uh, I just want to remind everyone that uh, the Christian Education Congress is uh, coming up. It's going to be a virtual event, a virtual meeting. So that's coming up uh, July the Get my dates right. July the twenty eighth, twenty ninth, thirtieth. So once you
want you to um, tune in for more information so that you can join in. Uh, it's going to be a virtual event, and so you'll have opportunity to uh, join in on Zoom. It's a concerted effort. It's a joint effort with uh, between the 12th Episcopal District and Bishop uh, Michael L. Mitchell and 7th Episcopal District and Bishop Samuel L. Green. So the two districts are coming together to provide a uh, dynamic Christian Ed uh, Congress event this year. And then uh, on uh, the fourth Sunday, uh, we are going to be celebrating, that's next Sunday, we're going to be celebrating our COVID-19 Family and Friends Day at our 1130 hour. We're going to be celebrating our COVID-19 Family and Friends Day. That's what we're calling it because of this pandemic. And we're not, it's, it's presenting, preventing us from doing our regular three o'clock service and have our regular program and activities. But we're not going to be defeated. We're going to have a COVID-19 Family and Friends Day during our 11 o'clock or Sunday morning service. So that's next Sunday. Invite your friends and family to listen in uh, and to hear. We'll have um, singing, and praying, and reading of the scripture, and we'll have uh, a speaker as well. So join in on next Sunday at the 1130 hour for our Family and Friends Day, uh, COVID-19 Family and Friends Day celebration. Now, in addition to that, what we'd like to do, or what we are doing, is we're offering each of you an opportunity to give a special thanks to a, to a family or friend, friend's member, to a member of your family or to one of your friends, to someone who has, who has blessed your life down through the years, who has been an encouragement to you in, in days past or in recent days, it does not matter. The person may, uh, may be still among the living or may not be, it does not matter. It is what's in your heart that matters. And you are grateful to them for what they poured into your life. You are yet grateful to them. If they did it 20 years ago, you're still grateful to them for what they uh, poured into your life. If they did it 40 years ago, you're still grateful for what they poured into your life. And if it was just 10 years ago, it, you're grateful even right now. And because you are grateful, uh, we're going to take the opportunity to give them a thanks. And that thanks is going to be in word, but it's going to be a written thanks. And so we're going to print all of our thank yous. Now, in order to get your thank you printed as a way for us to raise money, it's going to cost you $25 for your thank you. You donate $25 for that person, really, uh, because you are grateful. You donate $25 to your church, and we're going to print your thank you. Now, we're asking that you limit your uh, characters, your thank you, to 50 characters. That does not include the name. Even if you have a long name, short name, does not include the name. Just includes your thank you. So your thank you can be up to... 50 characters and um, you can just tell them how grateful or how thankful you are and make a $25 donation. Now you're wondering how you're going to get that done? Well, you can send that information to, um, to your class leader. Any of your class leaders are able to take that information. Every class leader will be able to take your um, thank you and submit it and of course, collect your $25 so that uh, when, when we get them all together, then we're gonna print them, and then we're gonna distribute um, the thank you so that people will be able to see who folks gave thanks to. All right? So that's, that's um, now we need you to do that, and um, we need you to do that by, um, well, soon. The sooner the better. The sooner you do it, the sooner we'll be able to get the books, to, uh, booklets together and get them out. All right? 
Don't forget, um, Wednesday night, 6.30, um, our Bible study presentation on this particular Wednesday night, this past Wednesday night, I should say, we incorporated our church school lesson along with the Bible with the Bible um, lesson on Wednesday night. And so we might just be doing that again on this Wednesday night. So tune in at 6.30 for uh, possibly a combination of the church school and Bible study lesson. Then I want to encourage you to, uh, your church still needs your support. You can pay your tithes, your offerings and gifts through using the Givelify app. If you have downloaded the Givelify app, you can use that Givelify app to make your electronic contribution to the church. To the church. Um, it goes directly to the church's account. And I wanna thank you to all of those who have been doing that. We thank God for you. We thank God for this uh, means, opportunity for us to continue our giving. And, and uh, we already know you can't beat God giving. The more you give, the more he gives in return. But in case you not ready to use the electronic method, then you're still able to mail your uh, tithes, offerings, and gifts to the church, and you can mail them to our post office box, post office box 542, post office box 542, Crossed, Arkansas, 71635. And so uh, you, you can use the mail. And then finally, um, our um, finance team, is willing to uh, meet you here at the church between five and six each Monday evening. So uh, Monday evenings from five to six, you can come by and drop off your um, tithes, offerings, and gifts at the church. And then um, I wanna tell you that if you did not get an opportunity to uh, purchase a anniversary, a uh, church anniversary booklet, a 118th church anniversary booklet, then um, you will still be able to get one. The booklet will cost you $10, and you can request uh, a copy from uh, any of the members of the uh, church anniversary committee. That is Sister uh, Deborah uh, Barnes, or Sister uh, Betty Williams, or uh, Brother Donald Flintroy. If you'll see one of them with your $10 and your request for a church anniversary booklet, um, then they will uh, get you the booklet. Now, uh, there is a deadline on that so that we will know how many have to be printed up and all of that. So we need you to do that by August the 5th. We need you to get your request in for your booklet. You might want to purchase one for some friends or for somebody. Uh, you want to send one to someone or, or just have some extras for your family. Uh, so you need to get that uh, request and your uh, money in before or by August the 5th. And then uh, my last announcement is that we have uh, some uh, daily bread devotional uh, booklets at the church and uh, on uh, this Monday, between 5 and 6 p.m., if you will stop by, you are welcome to uh, the uh, Daily Bread devotional. Uh, I've forgotten the exact months that they cover, but even if, uh, even no matter, uh, if you haven't, if you don't have one, they're good little devotionals, and they're good anytime, even if you're not on the correct date. I like to go back and read them from time to time. So stop by the church between 5 and 6 p.m. on tomorrow and get your daily devotional, daily bread uh, devotional book. Now, um, uh, Evangelist Cornelius is coming to uh, close us out in prayer. Uh, as always, Sister White and I want you to know that we love you and we thank you for your uh, care and concern.
this day and for this wonderful worship experience that you have allowed us to be. And God, we thank you in the name of Jesus for every participant. Lord, as we come to a close, we ask that you would just continue to cover us with the blood of Jesus. Protect us from all hurt, harm, and danger, O oh God, as we go throughout this week. Lord, we ask that you would just please order our steps in your word and let not any iniquity have dominion over us. God, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to bless our pastor, his wife, and his entire family. And then, God, we thank you for the labor of love that they continue to give to Gates Chapel. And Lord, please continue to bless the entire Gates Chapel Church family as well as all of those who have joined us this morning. Lord, we just take this opportunity to say that we love you, we praise you, and we magnify your holy name. Thank you, O oh God, for the word that has went forth all today. Keep putting God first. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet communion of the Holy